Hi, my name's Justine, and I'm a partner at a venture capital firm called A16Z, where I invest in early stage startups. I'm also a creator on the side. I love making and posting images and videos, mostly using AI creative tools, and I share them on X under the handle Venture Twins. I have been an AI video enthusiast for a long time, right when the first models were coming out. I spend way too much time testing all of them. And one of the things I've realized is that, especially now, it can be pretty overwhelming to figure out which model to use for a specific task. There's clearly different models that have different strengths, and it's important to know which tool to reach for. So we're going to dive into my current AI video stack for consumer creators like me starting with VO3, which I think is currently the best text to video model. So you access VO3 on Google Labs in this tool called Flow. So it's labs.google slash fx slash tools slash flow. And you're gonna have to be on the Google Ultra AI subscription, I think it's called, for it to work. Um, when you go in, you will click new project. And the important thing to know about VO3 is that only the text to video works if you want to generate audio natively at the same time when you generate video. Frames to video allows you to generate video from images and ingredients to video allows you to generate video from like a picture of a character or a picture of a scene and an object, combine them, things like that. Um, but if you want the cool feature, you're probably seeing everywhere where there's sound effects or people talking, only text to video works for that. Um, also on your settings, you will want to make sure, usually I do two outputs per prompt, more than that gets a little expensive credits wise, and then they will sometimes try to trick you by changing the model to VO2 even though you want VO3, so I would change it to VO3. Um, in terms of prompting, so some people do extremely long, complex, elaborate prompts where they describe the entire setup of the scene, the environment, the people, what each person is saying, how the camera is moving, that sort of thing. Um, I tend to do a little bit more simple prompts, see what works and doesn't work, and iterate. Um, so let's start with sort of like a drone fly through type scene. So, um, DVD drone shot flying through a museum, starts in a large hall full of statues and flies through an archway into a new room full of paintings. Finally, the drone flies out of the painting room and into a courtyard full of people dying. Um, and the reason I describe it sequentially like that is that sometimes if you don't make it clear that these different like scenes are linked to each other, the model will generate these like weird jump cuts that look unrelated. So we'll click play on that. Uh, and then while we're waiting, we're going to generate another one. So double check, it's still VO3. This time we're going to do talking. Um, here is a street style interview. A man with a microphone on the streets of New York City asks a woman on the sidewalk, um, but what brought you to NYC? She replies that can. I'm here to see the alien cult. He laughs and says, I didn't know that was a real thing. I've noticed that the model will often do something weird if you don't put in enough text to fill eight seconds of audio. For example, um, if you make it sound like it's supposed to be a street interview and it's an eight second video and there's only two seconds of audio, it will often make up like weird filler words from the characters in the middle, which you don't want. So I find it's actually better to have more text that gets cut off than too little. Alrighty, they are ready to play the drone. We have the statues, we have the painting. Pretty good. And then our second generation. Um, at least it got the movement pretty good. The sound scares me. I would probably take the first video on that one. And then our street interviews are getting ready as well. The first one is done. Let's play. What brought you to NYC? I'm here to see the alien cult. <laughs> I didn't know that was a real thing. Uh, what brought you to NYC? All righty. And you can see we just hit the eight second mark there. She was about to say something totally weird that made no sense. So we did a good job with that one. What brought you to NYC? I'm here to see the alien cult. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was a real thing. I, what brought you to NYC? All right. I like the second one, but I think they're both pretty good. And that is my video demo. Up next is my favorite model for generating a video from an image. So this is where you're starting with a photo or any other sort of image and you want to animate it. You want to make people move, maybe you want to make the background move, have things come in and out. And that is Kling 2.1. So you're going to go to app.klingai.com and then you're going to go into video. Make sure that the model up here is Kling 2.1. Um, there's now a master and just a normal one. I'm going to click master so we can get the best outputs here. Um, so right now, Kling 2.1 only supports a start frame, not a start and end frame. But I would imagine that they're going to add more frames soon as they've done for their other models. Um, so you can either upload an image or you can select from history. Let's see what I've uploaded in the past. Okay, this might be a good one. 
Um, so this is two people sort of in the dark engaged in a lightsaber battle. So we'll get a lot of action here and really get to see the quality of the model. So two people engaged in a lightsaber battle in a dark park at night, flashing lightsabers um, that are amazing sparks. So I usually do five seconds and one output. Um, you can do inspirations and presets here. Like you can control the way the camera moves or sort of set your own inputs. Um, I'm going to say the camera follows the subject moving and I normally don't do any negative prompts. One of the things I really like about Kling is that it's decently hard to mess up, I would say. So let's generate that one. Task submitted, generation and progress. And then we'll do a second one here. We can select from my history of uploads again. So I like this cat holding a boom box. And we will say, cat holding a boom box, sets the boom box on the ground and starts walking on hind legs off screen. And we will generate. Alrighty, so we have the outputs. Um, let's watch the lightsaber one first. This is pretty good. There's sparks, which I asked for. It's definitely a lightsaber battle. It seems to maintain decent character consistency. You can add sound or more elements. I think I'm going to leave it as is. Um, and then the cat one. Let's check him out. He puts down the boom box and he walks off the frame on his hind legs. So I'm liking both of those. That is how you use claim. If you want to, uh, okay, if we want to add sound, lightsaber battle. Okay, let's try this sound prompt from the video. Let's see how that works. I've actually never done this before, so it will be interesting. Okay, so it looks like it generates a couple different options. Not perfect. Okay, that one's good. All right, I like the third one best. So we are going to download this. All right, next we're gonna be talking about how you make a character speak. And my favorite tool for this is by far Hedra. Go to hedra.com and it'll ask what you wanna create and you will click video. All right, so what you need with Hedra um, is a start frame, so basically an image for the character, an audio script, and then a text prompt. And then there's some other things you'll choose here. If it's a talking character video, leave the model on Hedra's own model, character three. The dimensions, so like the aspect ratio of the video, the resolution. All right, I'm going to start with uploading an image. Uh, so start frame, upload image, pick a screenshot I generated of myself Ghibli style on a Zoom. And then for audio um, script, you can either generate speech um, in the platform, you can record audio, uh, or you can upload audio, which is awesome. So you have a ton of flexibility on if you want to use a pre-recorded voice or a new one. I'm going to generate speech, and I actually have a cloned version of my voice on Hedra, which is awesome. You can do that by clicking here into clone voice. And then once you clone your own voice with a really short um, audio script, you can then use it to generate yourself saying anything in the future. So I'm going to say, hi, this is Justine as an AI avatar on Hedra. Oh, two periods. And then I'm going to add to video, and then I'm going to say, woman smiling and happy and generates. Let's go ahead and play. Hi, this is Justine as an AI avatar on Hedra. Very cool. Love that. Um, and then you can also create image, capture image, upload image. So we're going to use Flux Context Pro and we're going to say baby podcaster with giant headphones being interviewed in front of a microphone sitting across from a an older one. Cool. Okay. And so one cool thing about this is you can drag to select if there's multiple characters um, in a scene, like in this case, there's this woman and the baby, or if you're trying to make something talk, that's like not a realistic object, you can drag uh, and select here to show this is the face. This is what should be animated. So we're going to add to video and then we're going to generate speech. Uh, Dreams come true. All right. We're going to pick Liam and we're going to say, I'm really feeling like I'm sitting through too many meetings, Linda. I'd like to call a moratorium on all one-on-ones before 1 p.m. Pacific. And we are going to add to video and baby podcaster being interviewed. And we're going to run. All right, let's I'm really this. feeling like I'm sitting through too many meetings, Linda. I'd like to call a moratorium on all one-on-ones before 1 p.m. Pacific. Cool. If I wanted to make this slightly better, I would have probably started. I've noticed that Hedra is better when you start with a neutral face from the character. Like he's sort of smiling at the beginning while the speech that he's saying is not super happy. Uh, but that's just me being incredibly picky. 
And now we're on to visual effects. So how do you make Hollywood grade VFX? Up next is Higgsfield, which is a very cool VFX platform. So what I really like about Higgsfield is you can sort of browse and see all of these really cool things that people are doing or things that they're making. Um, and then you can run them yourself. Um, so maybe let's do flood. Generate. So you can upload an image or you can generate it. Um, that is a cat friend. Let's see. I'm actually very curious to see how it will do with this pixel style image. Um, pixel style flood. Alrighty, let's see how it goes. Cool. Okay, I like that. I wasn't sure actually if it would animate it in pixel style, but I think it did a pretty good job. Cool. So let's explore the other effects and see what else we might want to make. I like this action run and set on fire one. This is pretty cool. Haven't seen anything like this before. So I'm going to hit generate. And then in this case, I don't have a great image to upload. Shot a woman running through a large library towards the viewer. See her expression on her face. And then I'm going to change it to the built-in model. We will use this one. Video action run set on fire. I think that is it. And then um, woman runs and then catches on fire. Let's see. And here it is. Let's watch. All right, she's running and she catches on fire. Pretty good. Next is my favorite place to use open source models like Wan and Hun Wan, or uh, to test a bunch of different models in one place. All right, here we are at Crea. So this is actually um, a multimodality generation and editing platform. So they do a bunch across image and video. And I'm actually gonna start in this image tab up here to show you some of the capabilities. So let's say anime dogs surfing on a surfboard in the ocean. I don't know if those are 100% anime, but okay. I like this one the best, so we're going to take this one and we are going to click video. Great. So now you can see the magic of Kriya, which is that you have all of these different models that you can run with different sort of characteristics uh, and different things that you can start with, whether it's start frame, end frame, styles, characters, and you can run the same prompt and the same starting image across all of these different models. So we're going to start with Wan, which is an open source model from China. Um, Let's see where else do we want it to run it. Maybe we also run it on Pika 2.2 with the same starting frame. And on how, how low. Awesome, here are the results. So not a ton of movement on this one. This one more movement, but kind of wonky. I like this one though. Um, I could extend the video. I could also add audio, or I may actually just want to download it and run it on Kriya's enhancer. So this is one of my favorite things about Kriya, which is you can run sort of all of these tools on top of your AI outputs in one place. So there's two enhancers within Kriya. There's Topaz and then there's Kriya's own model. I might run it on Topaz. Uh, I'm going to increase it to 60 frames per second, fix duplicate frames. Do we want to do anything with the grain? I think we're good. I'll click enhance. Awesome. And then this is the final upscale video, which you can see is now 60 frames per second. Um, a lot clearer. You can probably tell that there are a bunch of different things I didn't run here. So you can actually um, select the different type of video you have, the different model you have to use to enhance. Each of these models sort of focuses on or specializes at slightly different things. If you want it to fix the focus, um, how many frames per second you want it to see and things like grain, which is sort of just beyond the capability of what I typically want to do when I'm enhancing a video. Uh, I'm very happy with the results that you see here. Thanks so much for watching this overview on my favorite AI video tools. I'd love if you could comment below and let me know what your creator stack is. One of the coolest things about the AI creative community is that we're all so early and there are so many new tools and workflows to try out that I haven't explored yet. You can also follow me on Twitter at VentureTwins if you want to see more of the content that I create.